All right, so in today's video, we are basically checking out one of the cheapest, literally the cheapest Biden Fly 5 inch FPV drone that you can buy on Amazon. So this one is coming out from TCMMECU, and the name, I have no idea what the name is, but anyway, it is just, the listing is going to be down below, so if you wanted to click it, it's the e probably the easiest way to get to the listing. So last time I checked, the listing is only listed at $109, so it's a hell of a deal for what you're going to be getting. But there are some catch. The drone is coming in as PNP, so which means you are required to connect your own receiver to it. So in this video, I'm basically going to be showing you how to connect your ExpressLS receiver onto it. I'm going to bind it to your ExpressLS radio. We're going to set it up so it can connect to your analog goggles. And at the end, I'm also going to be doing some small flight tests so you can decide if this is worth it to be added in your arsenal. All right, let's get going. All right, so if you are the person that actually absolutely hates soldering, I wanted to let you know that this drone is very easy to set up because the flight controller actually has plugs, as you can see right here. So as I was mentioning, it's going to be quite simple, and we are basically going to be using the HGLRC little receiver that we can buy on Amazon. So this is the few, I think this is the one that, I don't, I don't see a lot of options, but I think this is the one that you can actually just plug and play that you don't have to actually solder. But this is going to be a very simple solution. So what you have to do to in order to connect the receiver is we're basically going to be starting by removing the screws of the top plate. You could potentially, actually, I don't think you have to even move the top plate. We could just remove the receiver. Let's open it. Just do it on the side and it should work directly. Okay. So we have two antenna options. And basically, yeah, one is a long one and one is a short one. So we have to make sure we plug it in the right way. I think either way it is going to be fine because this was probably arranged already. Actually, no. We have to plug it. You have to make sure that you plug it this side. You want the black one that goes to the ground. The V is going to be red. White one, T, and the yellow one is going to be R. So make sure you don't plug it upside down. It's still going to work, but it's just the wire is going to be very different. You just don't want to be confused with that. All right. So we're just going to plug it in like that. And then you have to connect an antenna. Otherwise, it's going to fry itself. So... This is how you do it. And as I was explaining on the previous section, that basically this is going to be the plug that you want to plug it in. Okay, so very simple. All you have to do is just, this is quite easy because this quad has so many space that it's not even require you to remove the top plate. Since the, also the pads are perfectly aligned as the regular sequence that you will want, this should be a simple plug and play that you don't even need to rearrange the wire. All right, so we're basically done with the installation. You can see that this is how simple to connect a like ExpressLS receiver on top of this quad. All right, so we're basically bringing out a short savior for us to plug in the LiPo, just to make sure that actually nothing is going to defry itself. Okay. So basically what SureSaver does is in case there is going to be any like power issue, it's going to glow red and you know that there's a short somewhere and you have to fix it. Right, let's power it on. Okay, so you can see that the receiver is actually blinking red. This is a good indication that it's actually going to be working. Okay, so since we have completed the installation of the receiver, next step, we will have to go to our computer so we will be able to enable the receiver. All right, so at our computer, you're basically going to be plugging in a USB-C cable to your flight controller. So the flight controller, as mentioned, is going to be the one in the middle. So the bottom one is your ESC, the middle one is your flight controller, and the top one is going to be your VTX. All right, so the next step, we are basically going to be swapping the view to our computer. All right, so at our computer, you're basically going to be going to the software called Betaflight. And if you don't know where beta, like what is beta flight, below is going to be a download link. You just basically have to download it and get it installed. All right. 
So once you're done, just hit connect and then you're going to go to the ports tab. So at a ports tab, basically since we, oh, so the UR2 was actually already enabled and this is what we want in order for the receiver to be working, to be talking to our flight controller. If this is not completed yet, you will have to manually select this one and then hit save and reboot. Once it's connected back, we're going to go into the receiver tab and the receiver tab, the serial UART, you will have to switch it to Crossfire for Express OS. And this is something that you have to do in order for the receiver to be talking to your flight controller. All right. Okay, so once we have completed the, ena the enable in our receiver, the next step we're gonna be talking about how to bind it to your radio. So in order to bind it to your radio, like the easiest method is by plug and unplug the quad three times very fast and basically hit the bind button on the radio. But in my channel, this is not the recommended method because I don't think it's good for the long run. So what you have to do is by setting up a binding phrase should be the most easy method. So what you have to do is you have to wait until the receiver to enter Wi-Fi mode like this. Since this is able to be powered on, you can see that it is, it is like blinking like really fast instead of like the earlier slower blinking. This is an indication that it's ready in Wi-Fi mode. So what we have to do is we're basically going to switch back to our computer. In our computer, you're basically going to be going into the Wi-Fi icon right here. And then you are basically going to be connecting to the Express Alerts RX. So if this is the first time you're connecting this to your computer or your cell phone, you can use a cell phone as well, yes. You will have to enter a password and the password is going to be Express Alerts all lower case. So if connection successfully, it is going to, a web page is going to be pop out like that, which will allow you to set up your binding phrase right here. And in case that it does not pop off, you can use this basically manually enter the, 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 the address onto your browser and it's also going to be help you bring out this web page. So we're going to set up a binding phrase right here. My binding phrase is going to be 654321. This is going to be same as the binding phrase I have on my radio. You will be able to set up whatever you like as long your radio and your receiver matches. So if you don't know what current firmware or how to, if you need, or you do need to flash your Express OS radio, here's going to be a link down below to show you the step-by-step -step as of how to do it. All right. So once you have set up the binding phrase and you can see that also, our firmware version is on 3.0.1, so 3.x, and my radio is also on 3.x, so they are automatically going to bind together. All right, so once we're done, you're just gonna hit save and reboot. First, now I will want you to unplug your quad so you can actually properly be power cycled. We're gonna plug it back in. So to make the receiver activate, you can see that right now the receiver is blinking slow, so it's kind of searching for the radio. And then you're going to bring out your radio and you're going to power it on. And since we already set up the binding phrase, they are automatically going to be just connect. Okay, so model mismatch. All right, because I have set up previously set up a model matching, so which we will have to be entering Express OS modes. You can see that basically right here it says model mismatch. If you have this problem, you just have to enter model matching and it's going to be on. Right now, you can see that the light is indicating a red indication. So this is an indication that it's actually bounded again. Once the radio signal has been connected to the RX receiver, we're actually going to go back to beta flight this time. And you're going basically going to go back to the receiver tab. So at the receiver tab, you just have to make sure that you're, everything you're getting stick inputs. Like you can see that if I move the sticks right here, you're getting throttle, you're going to get yaw, you're going to get pitch, you're going to get roll. All right. So this is a good thing that is, has been connected. And the next step, we're going to go into modes. So the modes tab is basically, you're going to be telling like the quad, like after I flip the switch, what should I do? So the most important is going to be arm, disarm and your flight modes. So I don't think there's a lot of stuff that is on this quad currently. So let's just do the basic setup. For arm, most of the radio that's coming from the manufacturers is going to have this button as the regular arm. So you can see that when I flip it, it's going to arm the quad. So you can see that it's currently showing aux one. So aux one is generally always this one. You can obviously customize it later on if you want, but 
the default setting is going to be this one. So after I flip it, you can see that the indication is turning red and the little dot is going there. So you will be able to arm it like this. And for modes, so angle mode is basically a mode that is basically going to be self-leveling. It's not going to allow you to turn over a certain degree. So it's going to be very good for beginners. All right. Uh, let's probably set it up like this on the bottom. So you can see that aux 2 is actually this one. Okay, so let's hit save. So arm is going to be this one. When you flip it, the propeller should start spinning, the motor should start spinning. And if you wanted to fly in angle mode, you just have to keep it here by default. And if you wanted to fly in like complete manual, this is your option. You just have to flip it anywhere in the whatever that is not on the bottom and it should work. After we have successfully set up the modes, next let's go to our video transmitter. So at our video transmitter, yes, I like to set my video to race band one. So you just have to put it on channel one and the power just for testing purpose, you can switch it to one watt. You can put it on 25. I'm just going to put it on 25 so it doesn't overheat like easily. And basically that is going to be the bulk of the setup. Now let's basically head back to the bench so we can test to see if it actually works on the motor. Does the motor spin and are we going to able to see any video footages? All right, so we're basically back to the bench. And what we're going to do in order to test out to see if our motors is working, we are going to have to actually plug in a LiPo. So this is a 4S LiPo. Make sure you don't plug in something that is bigger than this because this is a 4S quad, right? So once you have plugged in the LiPo, which is going to flip the arm switch to see if actually the motor spins. So you can see that this is a good indication that it's actually working. And as for the camera, basically you're going to bring out an IPV monitor or you can just go on your goggles. It's going to be exactly the same thing. So you can see that we're actually getting footage out from here. The reason behind we have nothing is because we have a camera cap. So you can see that we are actually getting footage. This camera is actually not too bad. Okay, anyway, this is a cheap enough quad that I don't think you should complain of anything on this thing. So, all right, so basically the next step, we're just going to remove the, basically remove the battery and we're going to add up some propellers and we will be able to like go outside and we can test fly this thing. So for this particular drone, the direction of the propellers it actually props in. So basically the motors are going to spin like in like this way. So you just have to make sure that the top, like the higher side of the propeller is facing in like this. So the first one, you're going to put it like that. And at the here, you're going to put it like, actually, this is the same direction. So this one actually goes to the corner. The next one here, this one props in like that. So same, this one has to be same as that one. All right, let's put it in like this. All right. Then you just have to tighten the nuts onto the tighten the nuts onto the bolt tighten the nuts onto the threads and then basically you are done and this drone is set up okay all right so we have completed the setup and i will see you at the outdoor field and we're going to pass flight this little quad let's get going all right, so we're basically going to be test flying this dirt cheap TC MMEC TC MMRC. I don't know if I have a name for this, but this is a basically a purple five inch. All right, we're going to test fly this. This is a 4S drone, so we will be using the CNHL. This is the Speed Pisa, and this is the 1200 MAH 4S 100C version. All right, let's plug it in. Let's give it a go. All right, so the footage you're seeing right now is coming directly from the purple camera. I have no idea what the name it is, but you can see it's, yeah, definitely a budget built quality. So if this is something that you have a concern, then yeah, probably this is not going to be the best option. But overall, you can still see most of the stuff. Yeah, but probably if you have to do it, probably just replace the whole thing. I think it has an issue that it doesn't do like the good, like directly from the sun. You can see that if I turn this way everything is going to do like super purple yeah but yeah but overall i would say that this thing yeah for for the price it is it it flies pretty good like basically i don't i don't see there's a lot of jitter or something even if you wanted to do like uh, acrobatic it can still 
can still be complete you can see that actually it's pretty smooth i would say this is not a bad drone if you're just considering the price yeah probably just replace the camera or if you want just replace the motor yeah the rest of the stuff pretty good you can see that you can do like super smooth like freestyle tricks no problem yeah yeah but the camera is definitely an issue that it's just it's just a weird color My intention is to kind of stay right here so I don't get in people's way. Yeah, because this camera is so bad I can't even see. Yeah, but overall I would say this is about it. So if you wanted to buy this, this is actually not bad. And now you know how to set up in like a really easy plug and play method. So yeah, this is definitely something that is worth it. But if you wanted to spend a little bit more more money you can like to like the $200 zone you can probably still get better results but this one yeah definitely for the price it's worth it if you just wanted to get it and just wanted to get started and not afraid of losing it and like you're not going to get heartbroken because of losing the drone then this is actually not bad and overall yeah this tuning I will say pretty good it's like out of the box it flies okay it flies pretty decent actually you can see that there's no a lot of jittery or something yeah it's kind of locked in so I was quite surprised that it actually flies so good yeah okay yeah so I think that's about it I don't think there's a lot of stuff that we can say about this yeah it's already the cheapest like why are you trying to ask for all right so I guess yeah if you have additional questions please feel free to leave it down below and i will see you in the next video bye for now